My name is Tom Jenkins. I'm the Chief Executive of the European Tour Operators Association. I, I entered the industry purely by accident. I think this is uh, something that most people in the industry share with me. Um, my father was supposed to be giving the inaugural talk um, at an ecumenical conference in North America. He, he was a minister. Um, and I found out, or he found out, that uh, the charter airline through whom he'd booked the ticket had moved his flight by two days. That meant he'd missed this inaugural talk. Um, so I, uh, having just left university, had been delegated to go and complain on his behalf. And I went into an office to complain and walked out with a job. Um, and so this is why I'm in the industry. Uh, I wouldn't claim there was any intention on my behalf to end up here. Work, working as the London representative of uh, a charter airline wasn't perhaps my destined role in life. Um, um, I was combining that with a number of other activities. But um, what happened was that um, in 1990, American Express kindly offered me the job of running their guiding department in Europe. And from there, um, they placed me in charge of operations. Um, and from there, I've worked for ETOA, um, and I've been in this position now since 1998. ETOA is an association. Um, we're here principally to represent the interests of, uh, of my members. Uh, uh, my members principally are the tour operators, the intermediaries who uh, source product and present it to clients throughout the world. Originally, we were founded to represent the interests of the inbound industry for Europe. Um, that meant uh, those who sold Europe to Japan, America, South America, um, and Australasia. What that meant in the, in the old days was that anybody with Europe written on their brochure, and that brochure being racked in a, a long-haul origin market travel agent, was entitled to be a member of ETOA. Um, since then, obviously, the market's changed dramatically. Um, the 1990s were the golden age of the uh, wholesaler, um, for reasons which are far too boring to go into here. Um, they, um, they boomed during the 1990s. Um, and uh, we have a number of wholesalers as members. And obviously in the 2000s, um, this is the great age of online intermediaries. So we have a number of online intermediaries as members. So, so now the, the association represents those tour operators who run scheduled product, those wholesalers who sell to other businesses and online intermediaries. And these people obviously are not that interested where their clients are. So uh, whilst we still sell Europe, the origin market aspect has become a bit blurrier. The future is always very interesting and it's very easy to talk about because we know absolutely nothing about it. I mean, it, it, so it's very tempting to say all sorts of things about the future. And my, my, my core reaction is that uh, one thing I know is that the obvious thing to say about the future is as follows. Uh, the obvious thing to say is that um, intermediaries who do not add value in some material way um, are going to find it very difficult. Um, People will say, um, with, with the advent of the in internet, um, with the increasing um, development of uh, suppliers trying to source their own clients, um, and thus disintermediating, those people who sit in the middle who are not adding value are going to find it very difficult to survive. And this, insofar as that is an obvious remark, is obviously true. The only difficulty with these remarks is that events always sabotage them. I think you'll find um, those operators who are fast on their feet and can deliver low-cost intermediary services will always find a role. And what we're looking at at the moment in the next 18 months in Europe, throughout Europe, is a very different consumer market for travel services than the one we've had over the last five years. And I think you'll find those people who can source clients and sell them product will always have a role. So the obvious remark is not necessarily the accurate or right one. 
one of the most interesting things, um, in some ways alarming things from a, from a tour operator's point of view, is the greater, greater interest that um, suppliers have for sourcing their clients directly through the internet. Um, this is a, a really interesting area. Whilst it um, seems to be a new phenomenon, it actually conforms to very, very traditional patterns. Uh, suppliers, when they're trying to source new clients, do so when things are booming. Um, when clients are walking in off the street and demanding your product, you don't need the sales help that other intermediaries provide you. You only need that help when demand dries up and you're looking at a very low occupancy. So I don't think what we're looking at is particularly new. Um, I think some, obviously some of the instruments are new and it lays down new challenges. I think the area which we're going to find particularly curious is when suppliers, when they're selling their services to clients, wish to add other services. They may wish to add, for instance, a restaurant to a hotel reservation or maybe a visit to an attraction. In doing so, they're packaging. And this comes with it all sorts of taxation and regulatory burdens. From my point of view, on one level as a tour operators association, this is good news because when they're doing that, they're becoming tour operators and the world cannot have too many tour operators. We're incredibly stupid in the way in which we tax tourism. Um, the tour operator's margin scheme, a phrase that induces narcolepsy and even the brightest soul. The tour operator's margin scheme, TOMS, um, imposes a 20% levy on all tourism exports from Europe. Um, this means, very simply, there isn't an industry packaging Europe, selling it outside Europe. It doesn't exist. If you want to buy a European packaged product, you have to go to Switzerland or somewhere else in the world. We don't have an industry. Package Travel Directive really is an amazing shackle on enterprise within Europe. If, if you are a supplier, if you are anybody and you wish to combine two products together and sell it to a consumer, you need to get insurance, you need to get bonding, and you need to take full legal responsibility for the delivery of those products. This is a huge burden on anybody wanting to be remotely creative in this industry. Now, how we're expected to be dynamic and bold when we're taxed in the way in which we're taxed and the way in which we're regulated is a mystery to me. So, those are the two big issues that need resolution. One of the things I think Europe really needs to consider and consider carefully and perhaps in Europe, the UK, even more carefully than the rest of Europe, is that visitors are incredibly fragile in their impulse to travel. They can easily be put off and this applies especially to long-haul visitors. Now, when we have the visas preventing people coming in, um, this is obviously a major problem, but it's a problem which is slowly starting to be addressed. We're miles away from solving it, but at least that problem is being tabled and being looked at. I think, however, what we ought to be concentrating on is looking at the whole process of welcome that we give people. We still treat arrivals as airports as people, as potential criminals that have to be processed. And that is the feeling that you get arriving at almost every European airport. If we can make that process, that arrival process, far more welcoming, far more reassuring, then we will be moving in the right direction for this century. So I run an association, I don't run a business, and running an association actually gives you very limited room for pride. Um, I, I spend my life representing the interests of those people who, who work for a living. Um, I, I suppose I only take pride when I'm subjected to an ad hominem attack, um, because that proves that I've won the argument, and that's the moment I most enjoy. Very simple. Um, I go where I have always gone on a holiday, which is the Dovey Valley in central Wales. Um, uh, the reasons for this um, are 
really anthropological rather than to do with consumer choice, but um, I find it um, the most congenial, most relaxing, most enchanting spot I know. What do I do on a holiday? I get exacerbated by all the things I don't have time to be irritated by at work. Thank <laughs> you.